Hello and welcome everybody to another Dustmorn Draft. I'm Paul Chion and today we are sitting at Platinum 3, I think. Uh, the season has reset, so we are well on our way to trying to grind back up to Mythic. And like I said before, I will make a pretty decent push this time around to try to get to a pretty high Mythic ranking, only because I've been a pretty big fan of Dustmorn Draft. There's just a lot of cool things you can do. You can draft a bunch of colors. There's a lot of powerful uh, archetypes. Great build around, so looking forward to making a big push this month. Now, before I head into this draft, I did want to say that this video is brought to you by TCGplayer.com. Check out TCGplayer.com for all your TCG singles and sealed product needs. If you want to purchase sealed product or singles at the most competitive prices, make sure you check them out and click that affiliate link in the description below before you do any shopping. Additionally, check out HeavyPlay.com for premium Magic the Gathering supplies and accessories. If you want top quality deck boxes, play mats, sleeves, dice boxes, life pads, and more, go to heavyplay.com slash paulchion for 10% off your first order. All right, new pack, sweet rare, no ley line, no ley line. Okay, that's a somewhat sweet rare. Okay, so there's Enduring Courage, which is a card that I've lost to a lot. I'm sure if you've been following my first week of the format, this card was kicking my butt. It is a four mana card, but it, it was pretty solid. There's Wildfire Wicker Folk, which I absolutely love. And there's also Spine Seeker, Spine Seeker Centipede, which is in the running for one of the best commons in the entire set. So I think it's between the Centipede, the Courage, and the Wicker Folk. Now, I do believe the Wicker Folk is probably the highest upside card. But, and, th you know, this is me kind of making, like, trying to figure out this format and kind of what's been working for me. And for that reason, I will take Centipede over Enduring Courage. I will. The reason being is if I was red-green, I believe the Firefolk is a significantly better card. But I have been having so much success with Green X. You just want to start with green, and this is the formula. Just copy what I do. You start green, you get the mana fixing, and you try your best to splash uh, and go three or four colors. And Spine Seeker, Spine Seeker Centipede is one of the most important pieces to that combination. It's so much better than a card like Moldering Gym, which does something similar. All right, here I will take Unnerving Grasp. Defiant Survivor is just okay, in my opinion. And with the decks that I tend to draft, I'm not looking to draft the most aggressive decks. So that, what that means is I likely will have less combat tricks. Meanwhile, Unnerving Grasp is one of the best uncommons in the set. It's awesome. Helps you get Delirium. Gives you tempo. You can bounce your own things for more value. So very, very good card. I think the other consideration is Survivor. And then special shout out to Unable to Scream and Clockwork Percussionist at Common. Now moving into this pack. This is a bit of a weaker pack. I am seeing some red cards here. Uh, there's a Sporogenic Infection, which can be okay if you are looking to be Black Green Delirium. No, uh, I don't really want to take Grasping Long Neck third pick, so I think it's just going to be kind of a speculative pick. I don't really like Tunnel Surveyor unless I am blue-white, but I guess I could technically be blue-white and just take it. I could also take something like a Percussionist if I wanted to be like a, a an aggressive red-green Delirium deck, which is also something that I've been having a lot of success with, but... Kind of tough. I might actually, this is actually kind of crazy. I will actually take the long neck here, third pick. The reason being here is just the fact that it's an enchantment creature. And oftentimes I'm going to want to get delirium. So I'm going to take that over the tunnel surveyor, which I think is the other option. All right, that's a fourth pick, Unnerving Grasp. Hopefully that's a sign that blue is open. Now, we could still have been blue-white, for example. That's a fourth pick sp split skin doll, and I also really like Fear of Surveillance, but definitely taking the Unnerving Grasp, noting that I am seeing some of these white cards. I also like Break Down the Door a fair amount, so that's also something to look at. But the blue cards are continuing to flow here. A fifth pick stay hidden, stay silent, so absolutely love that. Might not be seeing a bunch of the green. There's a Glasswork Shattered Yard as well, along with a Veteran Survivor and a Final Vengeance, but Stay Hidden, Stay Silent is premium removal. So very, very happy about that. Okay, so we might be looking to shift gears here. Not seeing a ton of the green cards here, but I do see a Glasswork Shattered Yard and a Skull Snap Nuisance. And I think I prefer the Glassworks Shattered Yard here. It's also a splashable removal spell if we do end up in a teamer deck, whereas this card is not as splashable. 
And not a big fan of fear or fail tests. Glimmer Burst is fine, but uh, I think this is a decent time to speculate here on the late Glassworks here and kind of see where things go. Moving on to this pack, pretty weak pack overall. The black cards are fine, but I think I'm just going to take a Bashful Beastie. This is a totally fine top end card to play at the top end of your mana curve. So, you know, like it's something that is, like I said, completely fine to play here. So solid start here. Now we have the choice between Get Out and Vanish from Sight. I'm actually not sure which one I like. I don't like this because it's double blue, but being able to bounce your stuff for value is certainly very strong. And I did pick up a Glassworks. Also, I feel like Vanish from Sight, you just kind of get for free and you don't want too many. So I'll take the get out here. This is a fairly weak pack. There is a world where we can potentially swap over to blue red. So I will take the Soul Rager in case we end up with a deck with a ton of rooms, but don't necessarily anticipate it. Here I'll take Don't Make a Sound just as a random two mana counter if I need it, but I would rather not play it. And this is kind of our configuration. And honestly, this is just how a lot of my decks kind of look. We have some interaction. We have a little bit of mana fixing. And uh, we just try to take all the powerful uncommons that we see in future packs. Now, this is pretty wild. There is a Percussionist and a Ragged Playmate here, which is pretty nuts. But I think I'm just going to play it safe here and take the Vanish from Sight, just because blue is definitely one of the colors that we want to be. And just kind of proceed from there. I also don't mind Twist Reality as a card. Megalodon, not so much. Now, blue-red is not the most powerful color combination. I'm going to still try to be green if possible, even if it means my green cards is just a centipede. But like I said, I haven't really seen a whole lot of green. I haven't seen any of the two drops. I haven't seen Moldering Gyms. I haven't seen uh, any extra centipedes or monstrous emergences. So, you know, maybe, maybe we're not supposed to be this color. Certainly could see a world, world where we're blue-red. Maybe blue... That's a, that's a last pick Skullcap Nuisance. Well, I mean, I just opened Zimone, so... All right, well... Even if green's not open, I mean... I think we just take it. There's also the Centipede here. There's a Brood Spinner, which is nice. Glassworks Shattered Yard is also a reasonable option, but Zimone is an absolute bomb. And there is no reason to now shy away from this. It's just one of those instances where even if it's not super open, you just fight people for it. That's what you got to do. Here, we're going to take the Growing Dread here. We are in desperate need of a two-mana play here. And it looks like we're going to firmly solidify ourselves into a blue-green deck here. So let's go ahead and take that. One nice thing is you can actually bounce the enchantment with the unner Unnerving Grasp and then replay it for extra value. Here, I'm not a huge fan of Ghost Vacuum. There's also Say Its Name. I think I might just take Unable to Scream. I've just been pretty impressed with this card in general. This card is like sometimes good, but sometimes does absolutely nothing. So in blue-green, just because in general, you tend to be a little bit lighter on interaction, I will uh, make sure that I take the Unable to Scream. Here, there is a Conductive Machete, a House Cartographer, and a Wary Watchdog. I like Wary Watchdog much more than I like House Cartographer. And in a lot of instances, I can see taking the Machete, but I might take the Watchdog just because I need two drops. I think the Machete is very good, but I'm a little bit concerned just because I, I picked up zero two drops in the first pack. So I will take the Watchdog, even though that I recognize that it's a, probably a slightly weaker card than the Conductive Machete there. Here we have an interesting card. We can either take Thorinspire Verge or Terramorphic Expanse. Hmm. This is a tap land. This is just always a forest and I always play it and then it gives me a red. But this is a blue-green land. Like, I'm, I don't necessarily have to splash Glassworks. Yeah, I'll just take Terramorphic Expanse. I, the Thornspire Verge is really cool. But I'll take this just because it helps me with Delirium. And there is a world where I just don't necessarily splash the red. And if that's the case, then... Especially when you're manifesting a bunch, you can flip over the red source, but... All right, this is actually really interesting. There's a Roaring Furnace and a Flood Pitch Drowner. This is a removal spell that also acts as a card draw effect, and Flood Pitch Drowner is also fantastic. I actually don't know what to take. You know, I actually... Uh, people are going to probably hate me for this pick. I actually think the pick is Flood Pitch Drowner. I, I'm, I'm, it's really, really important to prioritize your mana curve. 
Uh, the Roaring Removal spell is on the Splash, so it's not something that I'm going to play on turn 2 very often. And Flood Pitch Drowner is a premium, premium level uncommon. I absolutely love this card. Here I will take Piranha Fly over the second Twist Reality. I already have two counter spells if I do want to play them. This is something that I hope not to play, but I will have it there in case I do need a 2-drop. This is kind of the maybe stack here. We'll put it like after the Terramorphic Expanse. This is a blink of a pack. I don't, I legitimately don't know what to take. I guess I'll just take an Apparition. All right, uh, now the packs are looking quite bad. I guess I'll take an Inspector just because I don't want a million Twist Realities. This can be okay. We have what, one, two, three, four, Actually, we only have three Manifest cards. I do like Twist Reality in blue-green. Eh, maybe I'll just take Twist Reality. Oh, never mind. A three might be too many, I will just say. Three might be too many. All right, so some of these cards definitely drying up here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So... We are a little bit lacking in playable. I mean, granted, we have a bunch of potential playables here. These are just the cards that I'm reasonably happy playing with on the left side. I know I'm going to play at least one copy of probably Twist Reality. We would like more manifest payoffs here, just because that's what Blue Green's trying to do. Oh my gosh. All right. There, there is just too much reality being twisted here. Last pick, Tunnel Surveyor. So Blue, definitely open. Now we have a Valvagoth's Lair as a mana fixing land, but I think for us it's between the Wary Watchdog and Unable to Scream, and uh, just gonna take another two mana card here. Wow, that is an amazing card. We're just so far away from being able to play it. Like we need double, it would be a double splash. I just don't think that that's what I should take. It's one of the better rares in the set, though. It's really, really good. But Insidious Fungus is also a pretty good card. Disenchant effects are strong. It can ramp you sometimes. So I will play it safe here and take the Fungus. But th that does make me a little bit sad. There's a Murder here. Maybe Black was, supposed, was where we supposed to be. There's an Underwater Tunnel here, but I think I'm just going to take another 2-drop. And honestly, I think it's probably Flesh Burrower. I just hate the Cartographer. I don't know, like, do I have a way to actually connect with this? I guess I have Unnerving Grasp. All right, I'll try this, okay? I think it's, like, kind of close anyway, so I'll just try the Uncommon. I just, I just, there's so many instances where this thing just can't attack, ever. But maybe with the Unnerving Grasps, we can make it work. That's kind of the hope here. All right, I do like Break Down the House. I think it's quite nice. I think it's worth playing over the Flesh Burrow. Where the question is whether or not I want to splash the Dragonfire here. I don't, you know, I think this card is good. I think Dragonfire is probably a little bit better, but on the splash, my mana facing isn't perfect. I'll just take Break Down the Door. This is just another good three mana effect. Now we have this pack, which is pretty weak. Could use a four mana play, I guess. I don't mind the first Glimmer Burst. We have plenty of creatures. I have some land cyclers here already. So yeah, let's just go ahead and take a Glimmer Burst here as a little card draw effect. And now I'll take another Terramorphic Expanse. Maybe we can get this Glassworks in here. There's Patchwork Beastie or Wary Watchdog, but this, I don't really think this is a Beastie deck. I don't know. Maybe it is? Yeah, sure. I'll take it. All right, now there's an underwater... Ooh, Lakeside Shack. I think I'm going to have enough playables here. I don't really care about Underwater Tunnel. I don't have any surveil pay... Uh, I don't really have any manifest payoffs, and the beastie is just whatever. All right, let's take the Lakeside Shack. Ooh, love Unable to Scream here. Nice. Say its name is... Okay. It's less good if you don't have a bunch of Delirium stuff. But we'll see how this plays out here. Like, I think these are the cards I kind of like. 
Honestly, maybe I shouldn't play the Glassworks just because I have so much manifest. Go I think I have a lot of manifest going on. Let me take a look. I have Growing Dread, one, two, three, four manifest effects. I guess it's that's not a ton. So maybe it's fine. Do I have anything else to do with this? Like I can pick it up with Unnerving Grasp, which is a really great combination too. And I'm a little bit light on removal, so maybe I should play it, yeah. Take Inside Out. Love that as a combat trick, but don't think I'm gonna take it. Uh, wow. That's a lot of twist realities. That is a lot of twist realities. But like I said, it's, it's a little bit less good in this deck just because uh, we just don't have a ton of Delirium payoffs. This is a one mountain deck most likely. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Maybe another green source just because we have the centipede here. All right, still need to add four cards from the, this group of cards. I mean, I can play like a Megalodon, which brings my creature count up to 10. Is there any other creature I would like to play? I could play the long neck as well, just to have more ways to make permanence. So this puts us at 10 creatures, two unnerving grasps and a breakdown to door and growing dread. So that's 14 creatures. I'm also a pretty decent fan of Twist Reality, and I think it works pretty well with the Glimmer Burst that we have. So I don't mind playing this card either. Maybe like two. If I do play the Twist Realities, I probably should play one more Island and one less Forest. This still gives us access to 10 blue sources and nine green sources. And then the, we have the Megalodon as well. Could also just use one random large creature. I don't think I'm going to play both Megalodons just because I do think they can become a liability, but I think one is fine. Got a couple of counter spells to go with Vanish from Sight and Glimmer Burst, so those all really work really well together, all along with the Growing Dread. And then now we just need to find room for one more card. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I want. It might just be the Say Its Name. Let's... I'm not confident on this. We have a lot of kind of okay options, but nothing that's insane. There's also Get Out, which is kind of interesting with Glassworks, but... I already have two twist realities and I don't want, I don't really want to play a million counter spells. Also, it's not like the Terramorphic Expanses are hard blue sources either, but I think two twist realities, about two twist realities is fine. I, I suppose I could even consider playing a third one. You know what? I'm just gonna, let's just try it. Let's just try it. I just don't like that, uh, uh, our other options very much. And the nice thing about twist reality, at least, is the fact that you can just play it and manifest it and still make sure that you have a play. All right, now before round one starts, just want to say uh, that this video, if you've been enjoying this content uh, and want to support the channel in another way, my Patreon is the best way to do so. Shout out to all the patrons here. Thank you so much for all of your support. It really does mean a lot and it really does make it so that I can continue making this content. All right, gonna keep this here. <clears throat> Turn two cartographer on the play. Hey, we got the draw. Turn two cartographer with Turn three, Unnerving Grasp. Oh, and we drew the red source for Glassworks. That is awesome. What the heck was that? Okay. Let's bounce this. Uh, Yeah, we have some bounce effects, so bouncing Glimmer, the Glimmer card seems pretty nice. Oh, it doesn't even put it into play? I thought it put it into play. What? That is like way... <laughs> that's way worse than I thought it'd be. I don't need more lands, so I'm just gonna trade here. Play the Expanse to thin out my deck. I want to save Glassworks for a bigger creature, if possible. Okay. I will continue attacking. They get their treasure. All right, we got the beastie in play here. And then we have Glassworks and, and Unable to Scream as follow-ups. And then that's basically it. Kind of all in after that. Our opponent on a red-green delirium shell. 
Under the skin is amazing. Would have loved to have that one. Fear of being hunted. I wonder what they get back. All right, looks like the centipede. Great choice. Great, great choice. I think I'm going to use the glassworks on the burrower and that's kind of it. Those are my options. The... No, the, putting an artifact in the yard doesn't help with delirium. <coughs> Excuse me. Land was not ideal there. All right, let's burrow some flesh. All right, getting in for five. Well, I'm glad I put the Megalodon in my deck too, just to give me another big thing. Whoa! What the heck? I'm never as fly- and the thing is, it, it, it stays as a 2-4. That's really strong. Well... Still gotta use Unable to Scream. And we drew the Megalodon, which is pretty good draw. I wonder if I'm supposed to play both Megalodons just because... What just happened? Oh my gosh, that's insane. What is this turn? Their deck is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Flytrap, fear of burning alive. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? I don't think we're winning here. That was a good draw, though. Um... Wow. Wow. Wow, they can even play the Branch Snapper? That's unreasonable. Well, this is what the ideal, like, red-green Delirium aggro deck is. And, uh, yeah, it is very, very tough to beat. And, yeah, I think they got us. Oh, well. Good beats. <clears throat> Excuse me. Still have a little bit of a cough, for, uh, still recovering from the COVID that I got. <sighs> like I said, I'm not a big fan of these, but with all the manifests that I have, and not like, this deck doesn't have a ton of things to do with its mana. So maybe I do something like this. And then if I play both Megalodons, I'll shave one Twist Reality, and then I'll play a Say Its Name here, just because I increased the creature count. And we can play 16 lands with the two Megalodons. All right. Slightly different build here. Still would have lost to that deck. Man, the fact that they had a way to kill my 5-7 for two mana. Very, very strong. All right, opponent on the play. We have a very defensive hand here. All removal spells. All right, Growing Dread was a fantastic draw. They can't have anything here, right? Oh, okay. I was like, there's no way. Growing Dread. Uh, sure. We'll keep up Counterspell. Against Blue-Red, Break Down the Door might be pretty good. I mean, granted, like, both of these are very good. And if they play nothing, then I probably just want to uh, Manifest. I think I'm just gonna Manifest this. Uh, 
Uh, ooh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. It's like, do I want to get value here from the cartographer? I think so. You gotta have something, right? Come on. Yes. <laughs> we got value. And it also helps that we drew the Flood Pitch Drowner. I see. Okay, so they're gonna try to go off here, but... Hopefully they don't draw, like, play too many crazy enchantments here. Looks like a glass works. Gonna draw a card, sure. Flat pitch drowner. Let's target the tracker. Oh, they could have the bounce spell. That would be really bad. Huh. So it's like, do I just keep the Drowner around and just counter whatever they play? I actually think so. Like, this is just good pressure. And I want to play around the bounce spell. Okay. Still just going to play it patient here. See what they do. If they play something, I can bounce the entity tracker in response. I just want to play an instant speed game here. Oh, I should have cracked the Expanse. Whoops. Yeah, that was a mistake. Like, I'm cracking this Expanse no matter what. That was stupid. Alright, whatever. That was bad sequencing. I will get an island here just because I have a bunch of double blue cards. Unnerving Grasp is fantastic. What the heck is this? Vanish from sight. Okay. I think that card's pretty good to keep. And I will get aggressive here, I think. I'm gonna go ahead and cast Unnerving Grasp, targeting my Growing Dread. Oh, I guess that I shouldn't have kept that on top as a result. That was, yeah, that was bad. Oh, wow. I just need one more land? Okay. If I draw land number seven, I get a 7-7 seven, seven off the Zimone. That's pretty good. Couple of sequencing errors though in this game for sure. All right, there's the Entity Tracker. They gotta counter this, right? Like, they pretty clearly have the blue-blue counter. Yeah. Figured as much. And we drew Twist Reality, so we are good. Okay. Yeah, their deck was... I mean, Entity Tracker was cool, but I felt like their deck just had too much... do-nothing. Like, you still need to prior... You still need to make sure that you have things you can cast early. Uh, and... That is the one issue with the room deck. Like, if you go a little too deep on all the room stuff, like, and you don't be mind, you're not mindful of your two drops, you can just get run over. 
Draw four. That's my opponent's name. Tidings or opportunity? All right. Uh, we have a two lander here. I have a Megalodon here, so I think I'll keep. And I think the Unnerving Grasp will do a really good job of helping us uh, not get tempoed out, right? So I'm going to just fetch this mountain real quick. Oblivious Bookworm. Blech. Probably one of my least favorite cards in the set. No, like, it's sweet, but just from a power level, like, this this card just doesn't make sense to me. Like, why is it a 2-3? Like, e e look, let's just put it this way. You would play this card if it was a 1-1 one -one in your deck. And you would be happy about it. Right? That's all I'm saying. And they played another uncommon that's like, bleh. Just all the grown tests. I think the bookworm is better, but the analyst is also highly problematic. Highly problematic. Oh, okay. I mean, I do have the option of, like, bouncing Glimmer Works. Maybe that's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, actually. Uh, let's do a Delirium thing. Okay, it doesn't really matter, so let's just manifest the creature then. And then, do I want the Fungus or the Beastie? We'll go with the Beastie. We're pretty close to Delirium here. I know I lost out on a little bit of tempo, but having the ability to kill the Analyst, I think, is very important. Yeah, but they have a very nice Sultai deck going here. I don't think Nashi is particularly good on the splash, but... No! <laughs> it was an unnerving grasp. I think it's still important to kill the Analyst. This type of matchup just ends up being super grindy. And it's just important to remove their... The the, pl the places where they get card advantage. I mean, we're behind, we're behind it on all fronts. Like, we're missing land drops. Uh, they looted a couple times. They got value off the Analyst. They have a Balustrade Worm in their deck. You know, it's just uh, sometimes this happens. Sometimes this happens. Am I happy about it? No. But them's the beats. Well, we need to find Unable to Scream. I have a double block available on the Cryptid Inspector. Does this trample? Jesus. Why is it so large? Oh my gosh, what is this? What is this? Just, oh, just so many... Pre like, this is the deck that we wanted.
Granted, I guess we have unnerving grasps too, but... I don't think we're beating this balustrade worm. Unless we draw a counter spell. Twitching doll to what is Okay, I'm just I'm just I'm I'm done. All right, you know what? Look. These are just sometimes you look, it, 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 you have to just get used to it. It's like pretend you're cube the, the way I want to compare this for pretend you're just cube drafting, okay? Just pretend you're cube drafting and every now and then your opponent places a pieces of power or they open two pieces of power. Like, the bombs are so ridiculous, your opponents are going to have them, you have chances at them as well, and as, as long as you just kind of can learn to stomach those losses, because knowing that you are also as likely to find those rares at some point, gives you a little more peace of mind. I mean, my opponent had like five rares and just everything that you would want in their deck, so kudos to them, great deck. Like, I had a totally fine draw. That was a completely fine draw. All right, Fungus from the opponent. I'll play the Watchdog. Kind of want lands. Yeah, I'll keep that. Manifest Dread from the opponent. I'm happy trading the Watchdog for the Fungus, I think. We'll keep that as well. Zimone! Cryptid Inspector from the opponent. Let's go ahead and fetch our mountain, then play the Watchdog. Now I don't need lands. We have five. Pretty good spot to be here. Although, I guess they could technically flip something over. It's like I almost want to bounce the inspector. But I think that's bad, and I should just attack. I should just play Bashful Beastie. But I'm going to just attack with Primo because there's not. Because I'm going to be able to get the trigger here off the Zimone if they flip it up. If they flip it up and put a counter on this, it's really unlikely that they have a removal spell for Zimone and can flip something up. Oh, and, and a removal spell for Zimone and flip something up. So that's my thought process here. Yep. Like that was a free attack, right? Because we're, we're, they're legendary creatures, so. All right, Beastie down. Interesting. Beastie not down. Wow. We're on the tempo, play, temp, tempo plan here. What am I manifesting? Let's look at my card types, creature and land. Sorcery is going into the graveyard. Sure. Yeah, this is, this is an absolute beating. They take 13 here. Is that good? Now, how do we, like, even Waltz of Rage doesn't do it. Unless they go inside out plus Waltz of Rage. Cryptid Inspector, sure. I mean, they're just, they're just dead on board. Okay. All right, two and two. Look, look at them just, just like standing, standing strong. They're like, I'm not conceding. You better attack me. All right, that was a great draw. Great draw. 
on our side. So we drew the Zimone. We drew our rare, right? So now my opponent has to have the same mindset. You know, some people can just have rares and play Zimone, and that's that's what happens. I also had that Exile Enchantment spell for the Enduring card, which is pretty, pretty solid. All right, on the play here, okay. We have the turn two Cartographer on the play. Let's hope they don't have a two drop. Ah, this card. Oh, okay, they used the removal spell on it. I guess that's not that bad for me. All right, we'll play a Watchdog. Probably cycling one of these Megalodons. Ooh. So they get back a land. All right, at least we get an attack in this turn. Oh, that was a good draw too. Because now we can go uh, Growing Dread Island Cycle or Vanish from Sight, depending on what they play. All right, so we'll go Growing Dread. Oh, we hit the Beastie, which is great. Let's get a land. Now, they could have Betrayer's Bargain. So I'm just going to actually... I was thinking about flipping this up, but I'm going to choose not to. That could be a little conservative, but... We still have plays, so... Like, we still have the option of casting Vanish from Sight or Glimmer Burst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Good beats. Alright. I just wanted to put a ton of things in play. Let's see what they do. Although I guess I can't go like Vanish from Sight plus Megalodon. Whereas if I played the Megalodon, I could go Vanish from Sight plus Centipede. So maybe the sequencing wasn't ideal. It's just because it's really hard to kill a Megalodon anyways. So yeah, that might have been actually suboptimal sequencing. House Cartographer, okay. Oh, and then they're gonna play Fear of Exposure and tap this down and get a land? No, okay. No, this seems way better. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't need to mill anything. Should have milled. So they can block here and here and go to two. Or I can attack like this. I'll just attack like this. I don't have a lethal attack here just because even if I bounce this and attack with everything, they go to one. So let's just put them down to two and then play a Megalodon. Oh, let's keep unnerving Grasp. All right, well, we got two bound spells and a bunch of lethal attackers, so this should be good. Like, if they play Altanac, it's fine. The red, uh, uh, the Delirium, Fear of Burning Alive is fine. Okay. Oh, they might go double creature here. 5-4 and uh, Wildfire Wicker Folk is not bad. Obviously, if they do that, we just win. It looks like they have a bite spell of some kind. Okay. Another one? Wow! What a turn! I mean, it doesn't matter, but wow!
That was close. That was much closer than I thought it'd be. Good work, Fig Jam. That's a great deck. Double Beastie Beatdown. Red, green, delirium. I think it's my favorite color combination. Blue, green is sweeter, but I think red, green is actually better. It's much better at closing out games than blue, green is. Sometimes when you draft a blue, green deck, you just deck yourself after you draw too many cards and manifest too many things. But red, green, you're still curving out. You have most valuable Slayer, Scorching Dragonfire, clear the way. And you still have late game punch. Okay, three and two. Gonna keep this. We are on the draw. So the uh, cartographer is not as good. But I do have the unnerving grasp, so we'll see. But don't have land number three. And this is the awkward part. This is precisely why I am less high on the land cyclers. Just because if I'm on the draw, like... Depending on the matchup, it's just... It's kind of tough sometimes. To be able to find a time to land cycle. Okay. Still keeping, obviously. I mean, if I naturally draw Island, that would be A+. That would be Aces. Oh, there it is! There it is. All right, Black, Red. We're playing our land. Beating down. Yeah, I mean... If they have Winter's Intervention or Scorching Dragonfire, like, there's a lot of good two-man effects. The fact that they didn't have either is really good for us. Obviously. Sporogenic Infection, sure. Alright, well... I wonder if I should try to ramp here. Just because ramping into Beastie seems quite good. Yep. Man. Ins Insidious Fungus. Still just a really nice card. Alright, we got a Beastie in play now. Land number six will get us access to the Megalodon. We have an Unnerving Grasp. Stay hidden. Twist reality, so this is all great. And our opponent's land cycling the beastie. This is the one, I, it's the worst of the land, land cyclers. I think it's quite bad. Looks like they have a removal spell? Oh, okay. That's the thing though, I'm still getting value here. There's a spine seeker centipede. And we drew land for the megalodon. Okay, we are drawing beautifully here. Cannot complain about this. Basically, I don't want them to kill Megalodon. I just want them to, like, play creatures, right? Like, if they just play Fear of Exposure, but that seems like a pretty bad line, given that I have the 5-7. Oh, but they did it anyways. Oh, yeah, so this is just the perfect opportunity at a nice little tempo play here in the Unnerving Grasp. Just bounce that thing. Uh, Sure. Do I have Delirium? Sorcery, Enchantment, Land, Creature. Okay, I do. I'm not flipping over this turn because I have the Twist Reality, but just something to keep an eye out on. I'm ready. Twist Reality is ready. Just play the 5-4 again. You did it last turn. I mean, that was their best play last turn. So it's probably similar, right? Unless they drew a removal spell. Oh, that's a good magic card. Let's counter it. Oh, Zima. Oh, no. We already... Ah, yes. I. That, that's one thing that I need to keep remembering. And for all of you people with Zimone in your deck, be very, very careful with how you play your lands. Basically, what I'm telling you is never play land number seven. Okay, just general rule. If you have Zimone in your deck and you can afford not to, do not play land number seven. Keep it in your hand, because if you draw the Zimone, then you play land number seven and make your seven seven. You should probably play land number five, though. Here... I'm on the draw. 
Sure. We'll find a green source. There. Wow, that's lucky. I was just thinking, because I have two lands on the draw, with Stay Hidden, Stay Silent, and Glassworks, like, I'll be able to survive the initial onslaught, but obviously this is just way, way better. Let's be down. Let's play the Watchdog. Wow, draw, draw, drawing back-to-back -back forest is kind of wild. I don't think I need another land here just because I have land drops for the next two turns. I do need to basically stay hidden, stay silent is reserved for the reanimated Shepherd of Shepherding Spirits. That's kind of the way I look at it here. Fear of Lost Teeth. Ooh, that's... That is super annoying. I guess I just attack with the dog. I kind of want this trade because I have the other dog. <laughs> and obviously I don't want to use a removal spell on it. Because this doesn't exile. If it exiled, I would have considered using it. I don't think I want the Megalodon there either, so. Resurrected Cultist. I don't think they have Delirium. Not entirely sure what to do. I could just kill the Cultist. Eh, I'll just kill the Cultist. This is a discard outlet for them, so just get that off the board. I'll keep unable to scream. Five mana, emerge from the cocoon time maybe. Ghostly dancers? Man, my, my mana is just so awkward. Uh, I guess we'll... Well, unable to scream, just because I don't want them to get tokens. This is not an enchantment, right? Oh, I can kill it. Okay, sure. I feel like, given that they have ghostly dancers, I should probably keep insidious fungus around. Alright, I feel like they're gonna just overwhelm me with card advantage. But we'll see. Maybe they don't have an answer for the beastie. That's the hope. They only have five cards in hand. I doubt that their play is going to be turn on Widow's Walk attack. Wow, okay. I'll take three, like, I'm happy racing. Twist Reality is a great draw. I mean, I'm not blocking with this, so. Oh, it gets in for an extra point of damage, rather. All right, they're at 16. And I will pass. I think it's probably just best to keep up Twist Reality. So we'll let Fear of Lost Teeth resolve. Oh, nothing. Okay. Withering Torment. Yep. Ooh. 
What's our... How do we not have Delirium yet? We have Enchantment Creature Land. Okay. I'm gonna use this to get an island. No, I messed up! I literally- Oh my gosh! Oh, that was really bad. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I just need to not crack it. I, ne I need to not crack it, okay? I gotta keep this in play. I, the reason why I played it was to uh, get more blue sources so I can go stay hidden, stay silent, but... Trapped in the screen? It'd be funny if they targeted my fungus. Okay, well then I guess now I just killed the derelict addict. Valgavoth's faithful. I think I should counter that. Okay, we take two. I cannot block. I will not sack the expanse. I will turn this face up. I will not mill myself for no reason. Zimone! All right, that is a Spine Seeker Centipede. Let's attack. This is just really awkward. Like, do I just not care about Simone? The, the reason being is... I guess I don't have to play it just yet. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. We'll see what they do. If they play something... If they play something where I have to cast Stay Hidden, Stay Silent next turn, and I want to manifest, then I should sack the land, because I need eight mana. So yeah, I guess we're going to do it. And just, if we draw Zimone, we draw Zimone. That's where we're at. If we draw Zimone, we draw... The thing is, if I got the land, I could have cast Shattered Yard too. So, a little bit annoying, but yeah. I think now it's just, we're kind of racing, so I just need to get every last resource here. Attack. Manifest. Uh... Sure. So yeah, they'd be at five. You know what I mean? It'd be a very different game. Shroud Stomper. Oh. Oof. We used our removal spell and then they hit land number seven and played Shroud Stomper. I feel like it was correct to do so, but now this is unfortunate. We have an unable to scream that we need to draw here. Yeah, that's not ideal. Oh, that's gross. All right. So they'd be at six life. God, I'm at three. And they drawn so many cards. All right. Looks like they're probably gonna outvalue us here. We're at three life. We need to find an answer for the cheerleader. They have four cards in hand. Three cards in hand still. We're probably going to counter whatever. God, that's so sick because it gives them delirium. If I counter it. And then they can get back the cultist.
That is an interesting draw. That is an interesting draw. I have 12 cards left. Okay, I go to two. I have four, five, six, seven, eight lands. So say its name on Zimone doesn't do much. I'm gonna get the Tapper. Where is it? The Drowner. And... Pass. What do you have? Oh, that is quite good. Okay. I I need to draw get super lucky here. Yep. I need to get super lucky. That is not it. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, that is not it. Four, eight, nine, ten. All right, well, I can't um, sack this, so, all right, yeah. I mean, they had a solid black-white deck, and uh, we made it re reasonably far with this deck, but this didn't quite have the power, I want to say, to kind of quite get there, so... I think all things considered, like this was kind of the low rolled version of what you would expect out of a typical blue green deck, right? This is nothing too fancy. We have what, uh, a Zimone as our really good card and a couple of unnerving grasps. But outside of that, this is just kind of more of like your run of the mill deck. We didn't have any of the really great signpost on commons. We didn't have the analyst or the bookworm. We weren't really splashing for anything too strong. So all things considered, this is the type of deck where if you pick up four wins, you just draft this deck and you go, all right, you know, I'll be happy with like four or five wins. And then you just keep going. But you're able to get that on a pretty consistent basis. And then when you do high roll and you do get some of the really good rares, some of the really great splashable cards, then you get the trophy. So that's kind of what we were setting up for. And that's kind of what we ended up with in this draft. Now, could we have gone a different direction? Possibly, but blue definitely felt very open. We got a Zimone. Uh, we were definitely fighting some people for green, but because of green's depth, like we still just had perfectly serviceable cards that were green that went into our deck. And uh, ultimately we didn't quite get it done this time around, but you can fully expect lots of multicolored fun green decks. I got to draft a ton of awesome ones on stream. So I really, really hope I can share that once with all of you in a future draft. But we have uh, at least another month of this format. So I'm excited. I have been drafting a ton of Duskmorn. I plan, I prob I'll be, I've been drafting like four times a day, something like that. I have like 40 drafts logged total from the early access event to now. So we've been drafting a lot. I've been having a lot of fun. So like I said, gonna try to share more of those experiences with all of you. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you've enjoyed this content and wanted to support the channel in another way, my Patreon is the best way to do so. That's patreon.com slash Paul Chian. Thank you to all of the patrons. Additionally, check out tcgplayer.com for all your Magic Gathering singles and sealed product needs. You want a booster box, you want some singles for your next Magic Gathering tournament, make sure you check them out. Click that affiliate link in the description below if you wanted to shop through the website. Last but not least, check out heavyplay.com slash paulchion for 10% off your first order on all things uh, products and accessories. So deck boxes, play mats, sleeves, dice boxes, and more. Make sure you check them out. Also, if you want to say hi to them in person, they are very, very active in the convention scene. So they're actually going to have a presence at SCG Con Washington and DreamHack Atlanta this coming weekend. So make sure you say hi and tell them Paul sent you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.